Good morning, guys. So, uh, we've got a little bit of a late start to the day today, and uh, that's actually for management. So, it's snowing. Oh my goodness. It's not sticking on the roads yet, but it's sticking on everything else. So, that is, uh, how, how should we say, fun. Yes. Um, <clears throat> We've got more traffic at this time in the morning too, so great. Uh, <laughs> so the meeting last night, uh, the IEP meeting, actually went really, really well. I felt like uh, I was able to have some really meaningful dialogue uh, with the teachers in terms of uh, you know progress my daughter is making where she's at developmentally, what might be helpful strategies for her. Um, just being able to get on the same page with the teachers, honestly. And uh, being able to speak their language was such a huge thing and just understand what they're dealing with, what they're working with in terms of uh, like resource type things. Um, like understanding, just understanding how education works, how all, all of that. I mean, before going to school for it, I had no idea. Uh, and I have to say, it's been really, really invaluable to understand what goes into education and what goes into teachers. And, you know, if our teachers watching this, I appreciate you because your job is not easy. Um, but yeah, just being able to connect with the teachers, uh, it was so huge. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> oh, you're being bad. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, you know, as expected, my ex came in trying to slap me down and trying to, you know, dominate the, the discussion and he really just came across as being what he is. Uh, and I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to really refute anything. I didn't have to, um, you know, he, he was very much, very much baiting me and I absolutely did not rise to it, which was fantastic. And I can tell you guys, it is so amazing when you heal to the point where you no longer have any sort of physical reaction to your abuser attacking you verbally. Um, when you get to the point where it just does not affect you and you're able to just observe their behavior and go, oh, they're doing that. Okay. Now how do I go around it? <laughs> um, and it was, it's really interesting to me because I didn't realize that I didn't have a physical reaction until probably about half an hour after the meeting was over. I was so stressed out yesterday because I was, you know, we, we build things up in our heads and oh my God, it's like, I mean, it's snowier out here. <laughs> Holy cow. This is going to take longer than I expected. Ah. Anyway, um, out the back there, but uh, we're going at a slightly lower speeds than normal. I should be aired down a little bit, but oh, yeah, okay, this is you know, that's actually smart. We're going at low speeds because uh, the snow is sticking on the ground right now, <laughs> right where I'm at here. I don't want to go sliding into a curb, thank you. Oh, this hill. It's slushy right now, but no, it it went super well. Like I didn't, I didn't even really realize that I didn't get that shot of adrenaline. I didn't get that jolt um, 
when he came at me and when he did his really aggressive shtick, you know, that is, that's his bit. That's what he does. Um, you know, he comes out of the gate with, just so everybody knows, I'm recording this meeting. <laughs> so, you know, the teacher goes, you know, the teachers, the, the school goes, oh yeah, so are we. Like, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Uh, and I know that they, that's not, that wasn't their intent in saying that, but I was just, I was so amused by that. Um, <laughs> because it was supposed to be a power play on his part, and they were like, oh yeah, we're recording too. Um, <laughs> dude. Uh, you know, and there were, there were a couple of instances there where, <clears throat> you know, uh, since I joined remotely, um, it was, you know, I wasn't there to see uh, everything. Uh, I could only see certain parts of the room. But, uh, you know, nonverbals are really important, guys. Nonverbal communication, oh my gosh. You know, a couple of bombs were uh, dropped on me and uh, you know I uh, and there were a couple of things that my ex said where I just didn't respond I just I just you know raised my eyebrows I'm like huh well that's new <laughs> you know what else can you do? And, uh, and I, I let his behavior just sit in the silence. I didn't try to defend. I didn't try to attack. I didn't try anything. I just let it be what it was and let the school see that for what it is. Rather than me engaging and them being able to say, okay, you're both high conflict. I just let him do what he does and let that sit and make everybody else really uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, because I'm not there to get in a fight with him. I'm not there, no. I'm there to work with the teachers to be able to help my daughter and come up with a, you know, a plan for her and her education. So... You know, stay on track, guys. When you have to deal with these people, it is super difficult. I know, trust me. Um, but when you are dealing with these people, you got to stay on track because they will sidetrack you and they will, like, they will, oh, it's, yeah, no, it's not fun. It's not good um, what they will do. But you've got to stay on track because if you are dealing with people like this, um, you will suddenly find yourself, you know, when we're trying to deal with the issue at hand, you'll find yourself arguing about the price of cheese in France, you know, because they just, they take it off of the original issue because they don't want accountability. They don't, they don't want to solve the problem. Okay. They do not want to solve the problem. They do not want you to acknowledge the problem. They do not want, they do not want the problem, period. They don't want to deal with it. So they think, oh, if I deny it, if I obfuscate, if I do this, then it'll go away and I can just keep doing whatever I'm doing and not be held accountable, right? So, <clears throat> don't react to their stuff. If you're trying to talk to them about something and they come at you about something else, oh man, they're so good at getting you off track. It's, it's, it's like, <laughs> how do we end up over here? I was trying to talk about you know, how you're calling me a four or five letter word. <clears throat> and now we're arguing about something I did 10 years ago. You know? And... What? You know? So, don't, don't let them sidetrack you. Don't let them do 
that to you. Because they absolutely will if you give them the opportunity. And they'll try to take the opportunity or make the opportunity. Um, that's just what they do. It's not you, I promise. It's not personal. It's just them doing what they do. So if you're dealing with somebody like that, like I said, uh, it's just stay in your lane. Stay in, stay in your lane and stay focused on what you are there for. Because I tell you what, coming into this, he thought he had the home field advantage in terms of shutting me out and controlling the narrative. That's not how it ended. You know, he came in and tried to control everything. That's not... Mm -mm. When I say everything, I mean like... Uh... He tried to prevent me from having a voice. He tried to discredit anything that I said. It was his way or the highway. And here's the really interesting part. Sorry, it is so dry. My lips are cracking. And I'm I'm hydrated, but you know, I have to I have to put on some chapstick because man. Um, anyway, bro, get off my butt. Dude. The conditions are crappy. No, following closely is not a good idea. Dude, chill. So, oh, what was I saying? Sorry, I get distracted sometimes by these drivers. <laughs> but I would rather be distracted by the drivers than by my phone and what I'm talking about. So when it comes to uh, choices about my attention and what I'm doing, I would rather be safety conscious as opposed to prioritizing my phone. So anyhow, <laughs> that being what it is, You know, like I said in prior videos, show up authentically. Stay on target. Stay on task. They will try to derail you. They will try to get a reaction out of you. Um, like I said, he came in there guns blazing with his agenda of trying to make me look like the bad guy and trying to make me irrelevant. But here's the thing is I have chosen to get an education to educate myself. Uh, in child development for my daughter you know granted that's a that's a multi-use type uh, multi -use. it's versatile it's a versatile kind of education and so there's carryover this it's just it, it's good it's all around a good idea um, so with that I can communicate with the teachers, I can speak their language, I can understand what's going on in these IEP meetings, right? Um, and I can, I can communicate and show the teachers that I understand what they're doing, I understand what they're working on, and uh, that I appreciate it. I, like, I have an understanding of how much work really does go into these things. Because I'm going to tell you, teachers are some of the most underpaid and underappreciated people. The good ones are. Okay. Don't do it. Little fiat. You won't win. I promise you that. Uh, <laughs> so, all you can do, all you can control is you. Right? If the other person is trying to control the narrative, okay, sorry, I gotta turn my defroster on because I've got one corner of my windshield over here that's just foggy and it will not stop. Uh, I'm just trying to drive safely out here right now. So, 
Pardon me. If I'm a little distracted for a minute. Oh. Oh, my nose is itching. I gotta sneeze. Oh. Don't you hate when you have to sneeze but you can't? Oh, it's the worst. The worst. Uh. <laughs> so. That being said. It's taken a really long time for me to get to this place where I can just stay in my own lane and allow the abuser to do whatever he does and says and just let him expose himself. Right? Because they will. Because when they can't control you, they're just going to try harder. And they're going to do more of a smear thing. And the interesting thing about that is the worse they try to make you look and the more they fail with that and the more out of control they are the more crap they try to pull the better it is for you because the more that exposes them people get to see what you deal with. People get to see their true colors. And I promise you, they will tell on themselves. They will expose themselves. It's just a matter of time. Because if they cannot get to you, if they cannot get that reaction, if they cannot get you to behave in the way that they are claiming that you do or are going to, they are probably going to go to further extremes. And that exposes them. Hey, buddy, nice blinker. She's got a big ring. Super nice. Yep. Great. Bruh. No. This is why you don't, guys. When you when you turn, turn into your closest lane. Because this little Toyota behind me turned in and then crossed over. Like they they turned and they turned from the right lane into the far left lane. Don't do that. Don't do that. Mm -mm. Don't do it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I, like I said, I feel like it was, it was just a really good dialogue. I don't feel like, you know, I didn't go in there to beat or trounce the, uh, the abuser. I didn't go in there with a him versus me mentality. I went in with a me for my daughter mentality. Um, me with the teachers mentality. You know, uh, and I brought up a couple of really good points where the teachers were like, "Oh, yeah, that's that's really good." And uh, you know, when you when you get people excited um, about the ideas that you're presenting, it's really cool. So, you know, um, super positive experience. Anyway. I gotta go, so have a great day, guys.